The simulation is real. This Earth is digital. Scientists just built Earth 2.0, and it might save us all. Meanwhile, polluters could soon face war crime charges. No, it's not science fiction. It's happening right now. Welcome to 2024, where we're battling climate change with virtual planets and international courts. Buckle up, eco-warriors, because we're about to dive into a world where environmental protection is getting a serious upgrade. The future of our planet, it's wilder and more hopeful than you ever imagined. All right, you brilliant biosphere defenders and climate change crusaders, brace yourselves for another mind-bending episode. I'm your host, Theodore, reluctantly ready to be your guide through the environmental innovation jungle that's sprouting faster than bamboo on steroids. Oh, and before my brain decides to wander off into a tangent about the fascinating history of the first Earth Day, did you know it was inspired by an oil spill? Talk about turning lemons into organically grown, carbon-neutral lemonade. Let me introduce our resident experts, Gwen, our digital ecology enchantress, and Charlie, our environmental law luminary. Today, my dear ecosystem enthusiasts, we're diving headfirst into the cutting-edge world of environmental conservation, from virtual Earths that let scientists play what-if with the entire planet. Finally, a use for my SimCity skills to legal moves that could put ecocide on par with genocide. We're talking conservation tech so advanced, it makes Captain Planet look like he's using a recycled soda bottle as a spaceship. So activate those eco-friendly brain cells, my cherished chlorophyll connoisseurs. Whether you're a tree-hugging technophile, a legal eagle with a penchant for green justice, or just someone who's wondered if we could control Z climate change, this episode is your biodegradable ticket to understanding the wild world of 21st century environmentalism. And remember, this is episode 21 of our Worldwide Environmental Conservation Series, part of an entire day exploring global insights and new frontiers. Today, we're seeing how the fight to save our planet is getting a serious upgrade, with tools that would make even Mother Nature do a double take. Let's embark on this eco-odyssey and see if we can decode the future of conservation before my attention span decides to compost itself again. All right, ready to dive into some seriously cool sustainability stuff. We've got a whole bunch of articles here about how people are tackling climate change. And honestly, it's pretty inspiring. Yeah, the creativity is off the charts. I mean, we're talking high tech satellites, people living on the ocean, even Oktoberfest going green shows you the scope of this whole thing. For real. Yeah. Speaking of high tech, did you see that article about satellites with like AI brains analyzing climate data from space? Yeah. That's straight out of a sci-fi movie. It's wild and game changing. Seriously. Imagine instead of waiting for data to come down to Earth, we get real time insights on deforestation, ocean temperatures even the health of coral reefs. So we're talking like a constant eye in the sky telling us exactly what's happening, right? How could that change things, say, for disaster response? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's huge for that. Imagine a hurricane. These satellites could analyze its intensity, predict its path super accurately, give people way more time to prepare. That's incredible. Could save so many lives. And they mentioned these digital twins of Earth what even is that? Basically, it's like building the entire planet inside a computer. Oceans, forests, the air, everything. Whoa, like SimCity, but for the entire planet. Exactly. Yeah. But instead of building stuff, scientists use it to run simulations. What happens if sea levels rise, if we plant a million trees, that kind of thing. So it's like looking into the future, seeing the impact of different choices. That's amazing. But as cool as tech is, it's not the whole picture, right? Yeah. That article about scientists in Papua New Guinea really showed that. Totally. They're working with indigenous communities, and those folks, they know their environment like the back of their hands. Centuries of knowledge, right? Yeah. And I love that example about the grouper fish. Oh, yeah. Fascinating. Those fish, they only gather to spawn for a short time each year. Same spot every time. And that made them easy to overfish. You got it. But the locals, they've been protecting those spawning grounds for ages, making sure the fish can bounce back. Traditional conservation at its finest. Powerful stuff. Sometimes the answers are right there. We just got to know where to look. Yeah. But let's jump over to Colombia for a sec. 
they managed to slam the brakes on deforestation there. Right. What's their secret? I got to know. <laughs> well, no magic tricks, unfortunately, but it is a combo of strong leadership, community involvement, and actually enforcing the rules. When President Petro got elected, he made deforestation public enemy number one. So no more messing around. What they actually do, though? They went all in, expanded protected areas, teamed up with indigenous groups to find sustainable ways to make a living, and really cracked down on illegal logging and mining. A multi-pronged attack. Love it. But there must have been challenges, right? The article mentioned El Nino. Yeah, that's a worry. El Nino brings drier weather, higher risk of wildfires, which could undo a lot of their progress. But they're aware of it, trying to beef up their fire prevention. Fingers crossed that works. Now, switching gears from forests to courtrooms, what about this whole idea of making ecocide an international crime? That's intense. No kidding. Imagine holding people and corporations responsible for, like, the worst environmental destruction, just like war crimes. Wow, that really puts things into perspective. But how would that even work legally? Where do you even start? You're hitting on the tough part, defining ecocide legally. It's thorny. Intent, scale, who's to blame? Is it a CEO? or the government letting it happen. So many layers. A legal maze. Exactly. And getting everyone on board globally, that's another beast altogether. The Pacific Islands, they are really leading the charge, even want the International Criminal Court to recognize it. But 123 countries agreeing on one definition, that's a long shot. Seems like it. Still incredible, they're pushing for it. I bet for them, this is way more than just legal jargon. Absolutely. They're living with climate change's worst every single day, rising seas, crazy weather, their very existence is on the line. So yeah, this ecocide thing, it's personal and it's urgent. Really makes you think. This isn't just some abstract debate, it's about people's lives. Speaking of action, huh? what about the EU cracking down on greenwashing? They're upping their game for sure. New Eco-Design for Sustainable Products Regulation, long name, but it's all about fighting those misleading environmental claims. No more flimsy products that break after a year and end up in the trash? That's the idea. Products designed to last. Easy to repair. Imagine that. Right. No more tossing out a whole washing machine because one part breaks. Yeah. It's like that circular economy idea, right? Everything gets reused. Exactly. Mimicking nature, keeping stuff in use as long as possible. And so that old take, make, trash cycle. Love it. Welcome back to The Deep Dive. And speaking of companies making moves, did you see the one about Lego? surprise me. Right. They're going all in on sustainability, trying to make all their products from sustainable materials by 2032. Seriously? What, like recycled plastic bottles turned into Lego bricks? It's a bit more complicated, but they're using way more recycled and renewable materials, even exploring bio-based plastics from sugarcane. Sugarcane Legos. Yeah. The future is wild. And finally, we got to talk about this Oktoberfest thing. How do you even make that sustainable? It's happening. They're going all out with eco-friendly stuff. Like what? Compostable beer coasters? Yeah. Solar-powered pretzels? Yeah. Not quite, but close. Reusable beer steins, composting food waste, even using solar and biogas to power the whole thing. Wow, they're serious about this. Shows that even huge events can be more eco-friendly without killing the fun. Totally. People want it, and it's awesome to see businesses and event organizers actually listening. So having peace there actually helps protect the rainforest. That's wild. Yeah, it's all connected. With the peace talks, the government can actually get in there and enforce the rules. Makes sense, but it sounds kind of risky, right? What about uh, El Nino? Wasn't that in the article? Could mess things up. Yeah, that's a real concern. El Nino usually means drier weather for them, and that means more wildfires. Could undo a lot of the good they've done, but hey, at least they know it's coming, right? They're trying to get ahead of it. Let's hope so. Okay, time for a total shift here. From forests, we're going to courtrooms. Remember that article about making ecocide an actual international crime? Oh, man, that one really makes you think, huh? Like, what if we went after the people and companies trashing the planet the same way we go after war criminals? No kidding. But how would you even define that legally? It seems impossible. You're telling me. It'd be a legal nightmare. What counts as ethocide? Who's ultimately responsible? So many questions. And even if you figure that out, good luck getting every country on board.
Exactly, though some countries are way ahead of the curve. The Pacific Islands, for example, they're pushing hard for this, even want the International Criminal Court to take it on. Wow, they're not messing around. Yeah. But that makes sense, right? For them, this is personal. Totally. Rising sea levels, crazy storms, they're living the consequences every single day. Really puts it into perspective. So after looking at all this, it makes you wonder, can technology really solve everything when it comes to climate change? Yeah. Or do we need like a whole different mindset? That's the million dollar question, right? Don't get me wrong, technology is huge. Cleaner energy, those satellites we talked about, that's all vital, but it's only one side of the coin. Because we can invent all the eco gadgets we want, but if we don't actually change our habits, what's the point? Exactly. It's like, imagine trying to fix a leaky faucet while your basement's flooding. We gotta fix the source of the problem, and that means changing how we think about the planet. We can't keep treating it like an all-you-can-eat buffet. We need a sustainability revolution. Yeah. In our tech, yeah, but also in our heads. Love it. We've got to ditch this idea that we're separate from nature, that it's just something to control. Indigenous communities, they get it. They've always known we're part of this web. Their wisdom plus our science and tech, that's a powerful combo. It gives me hope. It does feel like we're at this crossroads, right? And the path we choose it matters. So before we wrap up, what's the one thing you hope people take away from all this? That everyone has a part to play. It's not just on governments or big companies. It's on all of us. Mm. The choices we make every single day, they matter. What we buy, what we eat, how we get around. Every little bit helps. Mm. And if we can inspire others to do the same, even better. Exactly. And listen, this isn't about being perfect overnight. It's about taking action, making changes, even if they're small. Just keep learning, keep asking those questions, and don't give up couldn't said better myself. Mm. Well, that's our deep dive into all things sustainability. Get out there and make a difference, everyone. Well, my esteemed estuary explorers and beloved biome buffs, we've reached the end of our journey through the high-tech, high-stakes world of modern conservation. Feeling like your brain just went through a climate-controlled car wash? Yeah, mine too. So what's your take? Ready to volunteer as a test subject for Earth's digital twin? Or are you more excited about the prospect of hauling polluters to The Hague? Drop your thoughts in the comments. Are you team virtual planets for the win? or let's lawyer up for Mother Nature. Your voice matters in this grand experiment we call saving the world. Remember, every environmental breakthrough in history started with someone asking, what if? So keep questioning, keep exploring, and who knows? Maybe you'll be the one to create the next game-changing conservation tech. Just promise me you'll use your powers for good, okay? No creating digital volcanoes or trying to sue clouds for raining on your parade, please. The planet isn't ready for that level of eco-chaos. Until next time, stay curious, stay green, and for the love of all that is biodegradable, don't forget that every little action counts. This is Theodore, signing off from the intersection of bits and bees. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go make sure my digital avatar isn't living a more sustainable life than I am. It's way too smug about its carbon footprint.